Welcome to this week's Hymn of the Week. This week we have ELW 485, I Am the Bread of Life. A great classic hymn tune, as we can see here, edited many times. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but text and music is by Suzanne Tulin, a composer and, uh, well, she joined Sisters of Mercy in Burlingame, California in 1960. And she was a high school teacher for a while. So as she was teaching high school, she took a break sat down and wrote I Am the Bread of Life, as we see here the words and text and tune and music. Next to her room during that break was the infirmary of the school where the students would come to relax from the stresses of the test and exams. Apparently when she was writing this and probably playing it, one of the students heard her. And what's interesting here is not so much that the students heard her, but what she did with her music. Because so many composers do this. If you are a composer, you can relate. I've done this before too. The very, uh, very exciting throw, crumbling up the music and throwing it into the trash can because we just thought the material was absolutely horrific. Uh, I'm sure many composers could relate, all the way back to Ludwig van Beethoven and maybe even earlier. Uh, but that's what she did. She wrote this and she threw it in the trash can. It's like, this is not good material. But after she walked out, quoting her words here, a little blonde freshman came up and mentioned this to her. She said that she really thought that the piece she had was beautiful, what she was doing. So she went back in, Suzanne went back into that room and she picked it up out of the trash can and she taped it back together. And this is why we have I Am the Bread of Life today. That might be the true power of this song, not just that it's the words of Jesus, of course that brings power, but also the idea of this piecing back together, something that was broken and being made whole, for example, as we see here, by the bread of life and Jesus raising us up on the last day, that promise in John 6. So that brings us to the text. The text, of course, uh, verse, verses 1 to 4 are all the words of Jesus from John 6, uh, various verses, I wrote them down, 35, 44, 51, and 53. And of course, this is the history of Paul Gerhardt coming into play, or some of the hymns like How Firm a Foundation, where we are setting the words of Jesus now and actually singing them, which I think is wonderful. Now this is where it can get tricky, because verses 1 to 4 are the words of Jesus, but verse 5 is a personal faith statement, which is why the text has been changed so many times. You can see 66, 70, 86, 1993. Some put, yes, Lord, we believe. Some will put, and I raise them up, or I raise you up. So slight changes. Thankfully, Suzanne has been willing to accept those changes, uh, so this hymn can be sung in so many churches throughout the world. But this fifth verse is a statement of faith. And what's great about this is the first four verses, just to repeat, are the words of Jesus from those verses that I mentioned in John 6. And then verse 5 becomes a statement of faith that I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who have come into the world, uh, which is an interesting little textual thing. Uh, <laughs> but either way, the point is, it gives us a moment to really be public about our faith in music. And yes, we do that in hymns, but this is different because we're being inspired by the words of Jesus. Jesus living inside of us today. We're singing those words and then we're reaffirming, yes, Lord, we believe, or yes, Lord, I believe in this text. So that's important. And it brings a power to this hymn that some other hymns uh, explore in different ways. So let's look at uh, the refrain. Lovely refrain because what it does is it has this rising effect. So you can see the same pattern, now it's going to go a little higher. So the nice thing was Suzanne did do uh, pick the same rhythm, so we have the same rhythm repeating, or rhythmic motives are coming back. And now, the third one. And then it slightly changes just to finish it off and end it on tonic chord. So it's very nice. And there's so much.
much you can do with this hymn, and I like to explore the many different ways of it. What's interesting is I wrote down uh, here the, wor the interpretation of her, uh, Suzanne Tulin. She calls the hymn sentimental. I certainly am not going to disagree with her, but I'm going to say there's so much more, and this is a great example of a hymn that was pieced together from the trash, right, from the trash can, that is just such a clear way to be rooted and to continue to be dedicated to Christ from day to day. Singing those words, it's almost like a devotion right in front of you. Uh, you could actually do this if you wanted to for a committee meeting. You could just play these verses because Jesus is speaking in 1 to 4 and then have everyone sing in verse 5. And yes, I know some of you music directors are thinking, what are you thinking? You're crazy. Let, they can't sing. I would tell you try it because the power of singing and how it draws us closer to God, that unique mystery, is one we're still trying to explore today all across musicology and across Christianity. So here we go. I'm going to explore lots of different ways for this. I am the bread of life. And I'm just going to make a quick warning here that it will get loud because I like this to get loud. Uh, so if you can't hear me, just consider those voices. I'm still singing. Sing with me. Here we go.
This is one of those hymns that it does often bring me to tears because of the power of that promise. And we, and this is one of those hymns where if you want to go back and someone may challenge you or you think, oh, I didn't respond right in this situation or I didn't say I didn't believe or this is one you can say, no, I sang these words and you know, Lord, I believe. I made statement that you are the Christ, the Son of God. And I did it in front of others. And what a great opportunity uh, to do that through music. Thank you very much for listening to Hymn of the Week.